Hey -o, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens, it's Omni Dog from Omni Dogs Vault with another root beer review of really great comics that I enjoyed. First, the frosty goodness of Frost Top, who I really need to get as a sponsor. Mm. Okay, first up, a lot of people. Uh, in the Omnibros chat, especially, that I take part in, have been recommending Eternal Empire to me. This is written by Sarah Vaughn and Jonathan Luna, with art by Jonathan Luna. Actually, everything's by Jonathan Luna. Story, script, illustrations, lettering, design. So if you are a fan of Jonathan Luna, you'll like it. Some people don't like his art. I happen to like his art, so I dug this book. Uh to start out with, this is, you know, typical Jonathan Luna. This is the team behind Alex and Ada, which I highly enjoyed. Two strangers in a world that is being conquered by an empress, the eternal empress, uh, who has waged um, unrelenting war and is taking over the world village by village, city, country, state, whatever. She's taking it over. And two strangers in two completely different parts of this empire have the same vision. They end up meeting, and it turns out they can somehow create fire in their hands and create swords out of it, which is actually really cool. Uh, and that's one of the really cool parts of it. Um, so what do they do with this fire? They're, they've met, they've created this fire, and they're trying to escape their fate of being slaves in this eternal empire. It takes them on, on their adventures, and they even um, are, defeat some of the uh, encroaching savage warriors, whatever they're called. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they are the the uh, the guard of the eternal empress and they manage to defeat some of them in battle and then it turns out the people they save don't want to be saved they're like we'll take our chances with the eternal empire so that's the kind of baloney that they sometimes face but the book is really well done i really enjoyed this it's an ongoing so of course i was disappointed that at the end it ends on a cliffhanger but um uh, it is. Uh, I like Luna's really clean art style. It's uh, it's very simple, but it's very effective, and it's um, a kind of a magical mystery tour uh, as to what they're what these two after they meet, how they embark on what their plan is. Their plan sort of comes together as they're going along, but they're trying to get to safety basically and escape the eternal empire which is hard because the eternal empress is pretty much taking over the world uh it does take a little bit it's it's got a lot of setup in the beginning i will say that there's a lot of setup going on uh but it does pay off once they finally meet and they are able to um try to form some plans as to where they can find safety and um some of the some of the things that they encounter are really interesting and w really well done. I enjoyed this book a lot, um, and it's got um, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it for you. I don't want to say what it's got, and it's got something special in it at the near the very end that is very intriguing and makes me to want to read it even more. So this gets high recommendation from me, Eternal Empire. Um, I'm, I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to Marvel. I, t I tend to dip into an X-Men book and I go, oh, okay, that happened whenever, back in the 80s, I guess, and that affected this. So I, I, I read Marvel books with an open mind, just assuming whatever happened, happened. And I tend to get a lot out of these, especially these Marvel thin trade paperbacks. They pack a lot of story into these thin trade paperbacks. This one's Angela, Asgard's assassin. Now, I didn't know that Angela was Thor and Loki's long lost sister. I had no idea she was a major league assassin. Um, I did not know any of that. One thing I will tell you, 
Chichetto is it? No, it's Jimenez's art, written by Gillen. The artwork is freaking fantastic in this book, and it helps propel the story far along. Angela uh, comes upon a long lost friend. In her adventures, she has stolen a baby, the first baby that has been born to Odin and Freya um, in eons, apparently. Uh, and what are her motivations for stealing? What does she plan on doing with it? And, you know, why has she done this? And here you see some of the cool paneling that goes on. It's very well done, I thought. I really enjoyed it. And it's uh, I I have I get a big kick out of Angela. I think she's really she doesn't have much of a sense of humor. She does have a sidekick that does have a sense of humor, which helps propel the story along. But you are wondering, and, and she's got all of Asgard after her now, including Odin's son, and uh, the members of Asgard even go to hell to get help from Hela to track down Angela and get this baby back. So I found this to be a really compelling and interesting story. It's one and done. It just it's um, Angela's uh, Angela Asgard's Assassin one through six, and it's written by Karen Gillan and Marguerite Bennett. Love Marguerite Bennett. And illustrated by Phil Jimenez and Stephanie Hans. And I dug this book. And I did not know anything. She hitches a ride with the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is fun. They are really well represented and well done in this book. So I highly recommend Angela Asgard's Assassin. You don't need to know Jack about anything except to know who Odin's son, previously known as Thor. So this book's a little bit a little bit older. Let's see, when was it made? 2015. So it's a little bit older. It took place uh, back when Thor did not have the hammer. And I highly recommend it. Now, here are two books that I really recommend. I love Rose, Volume 1 and Volume 2. First of all, ay ay ay, the artwork in this book. I was not familiar with this artist. Maybe you guys are Ig Huara, the writer's Meredith Finch, who I'm sure you're familiar with. But the art is just excellent in this book. It is wonderful. And it's about another empress who wants all magic destroyed. And Rose happens to have a bit of magic in her. And it deals with the fact that she is a uh, turns out to be a guardian. And there are cats, K-H-A-T, that um, bond with the guardians to create um, basically an unstoppable force. And it's the story of Rose trying to find her cat, who were thought to be extinct. And unfortunately, the name of her cat is Thorn. So that's kind of corny, Rose and Thorn, but it is what it is. Uh, that Don't let it detract you from a really good book. This is really well written, lots of magic, fantasy, um, which is right up my alley, as she strives to uh, control her magic deal with her adventures in finding her cat, um, what happens um, in dealing when she finds, does she find adversaries? Does she find uh, friends? What does she do when she finds the friends? And what about this evil empress's policy of burning down every single village on the earth, trying to find the last vestiges of magic? Um, this is volume one. And Volume 2, uh, they both end on cliffhangers, which kind of bums me out that I really wanted this to be 12 issues and done. But there's going to be another trade coming out. But don't let that stop you. You should read both issues, both volumes of Rose. It is fantastic. I really enjoyed it as she struggles with uh, learning her magic, getting it together, and Things aren't always what they seem in this book. There's lots of surprises in this book, which I really appreciated. Finding out some people aren't who they say they are and turning out to some adversaries turn out to be friends. Friends turn out to be adversaries. You never know what's going to happen in this book. I think it's one of Meredith Finch's best books. Uh, I uh, really, really enjoyed this book, Rose. 
It is um, exceedingly fun, and I tore through it in both volumes in about an hour. So this is from Image. It's not particularly expensive. It's labeled under fantasy, and I love fantasy. So this is a really fun book uh, about Rose trying to find her cat named Thorn, and together they will change the world. Mm -hmm, right? Rose. You definitely need to pick this up. I enjoyed it a lot. The last book was recommended to me by a viewer named Jeffrey Roberts. Jeffrey, thank you. This book is great. It's called Revelations by Paul Jenkins with art by Umberto Ramos. Um, some people, it takes a little bit of, let me see if I can get a representative page. Uh, Ramos's art is a little bit different. I like it. So if you're a fan of Ramos's art, you'll be fine with it. You got to be fine with Paul Jenkins writing because he is one of the great writers around right now. And I totally dug this book. It's a murder mystery set in the uh, Vatican. Uh, there's all kinds of intrigue, conspiracy, backstabbing. And it is, a, it is one and done. It's by Dark Horse. It is... Um, a very good book. Gosh, I like this book a lot. It ha um, Things aren't what they seem in this book. As this detective tries to solve this uh, murder slash perhaps suicide of the next in line to uh, replace the Pope. And it deals with a lapsed Catholic and his faith. But faith actually turns out to be a pretty big deal in this book. Um because it's got an excellent epic ending. Uh, one of the better endings that I've read and an unexpected ending. I, I can't say enough about this book. I thought it was great. I think that it's lightly out of print. Maybe it's lightly out of print. If it's in print, it's, it's not very expensive. I got it dirt cheap on Amazon. So I, don't let that stop you. Just go ahead and order it on Amazon. You will really dig this book. I found it to be a, a good murder mystery book with uh, overtones of conspiracy and faith and the Catholic Church and stuff. It, it's not um, it's not your typical murder mystery. I will say that for you, for it. With uh, really great art. I, I happen to like Ramos's art, and I've pronounced his name probably four different ways so far, but hey, whatever. Humberto Ramos. Um, he is the um, uh, uh, illustrator of this book, and I dug it a lot. So, Jeffrey, thank you so much for this recommendation. I highly, highly enjoyed it, and I think you will too. It is uh, a great read. Really a um, great crime mystery book. So that's it for Root Beer Reviews. Let's take a last hit of Root Beer. Hold on, hold on. Mmm, that is a spot. I might finish this whole thing today, although I really shouldn't. But it turns out it's important for you to hit the like button for some reason. So please, if you can, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. All comments I respond to. I love my viewers. Thank you so much for all your support. And as usual, peace and love, peace and love. Until next time.